Hi everyone, this is Basic Oilfield Mark Part 3. My name is Toya Sita Miguele and I'll be taking you through this course. In this course, we will discuss the topics capacity, single string capacity, hole capacity, capacity of a mixed string, and lock capacity, and how to determine the height of a fluid in a column. So let's get into capacity. In all sold terms, capacity is the volume of fluid required to fill an open hole, pipe, a tubing, or a casing. These objects are in a cylindrical form, so the volume of a cylinder is appropriated for this, meaning that the equations are derived from your volume of a cylinder, which most of us are aware of. It is mainly expressed in barrels, cubic feet, and gallons. The calculation can be done in various ways, either using your capacity factors from a field data book or using these equations and plugging in, plug in your diameters for each casing, tubing, or pipe. And your capacity factors can be found in a lot of oil, in a lot of oil and gas service companies' field data books. I know Halliburton has their famous red book, Slumber J has a field data book, and Baker Hughes, I think they also have a field data book as well. And I think Mag Magnum All Tools and a host of other companies. But one thing to consider with the field data books is you have to consider the casing tubing weight, the pipe weight. They also give you considerations for couplings and many other factors. But for the essence of this exercise, we're going to stick with the equation in barrel per, per foot which is this equation right here. And these are just volumetric equivalents if you ever have to convert from one unit set to the other. So let's start off with single string capacity. What is the capacity of a string of 278 inches, 6.5 pounds per foot tubing, which is 7,000 feet deep? So this is my diagram. This will represent my tubing. This is my height of my tubing in the well bore. So using my equation that I said we're going to use, which is 0 0.0009714 times d squared, I multiply it by my diameter. One thing you have to consider for the diameter to be used for these equations, excluding the whole capacity which would just be the diameter of the hole, is that you use the inner diameter. This represents 2.875, so this would be 2.441. And this information can be got from, can be got from any field data book. I will post a link of that um, towards the end of this video. So you, you, you multiply that by your feet, how deep you are, and you will determine how many barrels will fill this column. So that's my capacity. Now, what is the capacity of a well 2100 feet deep, 7 inches diameter, 23 pound per foot casing? So you also have to consider this should be inner diameter as always. So considering that, I just multiply by my height. And I get my answer. So this is just casing larger, tubing smaller. That's all. Nothing too difficult. Next, hole capacity. A lot of oil and gas wells are drilled, are created by drilling through the earth layer of the earth's surface. Once the hole is drilled to the depth of the pavement, you begin the casing process. The diameter of the hole is dependent on the size of the drill bit used in the drilling process. There's also an API document for different sizes of drill bits. I, I will post that down at the end of this video as well. Factors to consider for capacity of a hole include washout and wall slurring. I also have a glossary for unknown words and I'll post that at the end of the video as well. But for the essence, washout just occurs when there's, a, when there's a gap or a normal hole on the sides while I'm drilling. So this capacity factors um, 
in our flow data book as the un or uniform hole. Also, you can obtain the diameter of a hole by running your caliper equipment to obtain caliper logs, which will give you accurate measurements of your diameter. So I have an example here of hole capacity. So what is the capacity of a hole which is 500 feet deep, 6 inches diameter, um, in a 6 inch diameter hole? So like I mentioned already, for hole, you use diameter of a hole. If it was my casing, I'll have to find my ID for my flow data book. Or if it was my tubing, I'll have to find my ID for my flow data book. So let's plug in my answer, my, my value, multiply it by my height, and I obtain my answer. Next, capacity of a mixed string. So mixed string means having two or more different size pipes or drill bits in the well bore. Drill pipes in the well bore, I mean. The capacity of a, mill, of a mixed string can be calculated by finding the value of the individual strings and adding them up. Total capacity is 0 0.00971 for DL squared, which represents the diameter of a large ID, and 0 0.00971 for DS squared, which represents the diameter of the ID of the small string. So large string plus small string gives me total capacity. But this is my Barrow Coffer factor for my capacity factor. Now, in order for me to know how many barrels, I multiply them by the individual heights. Height of large string, height of small string. So let's get into this problem. Prior to setting a packer, fluid in the well was to be displaced with treated fluid. How many barrels is required to displace the entire column given the conditions indicated in the diagram. So I have two seven eighths and two three eighths uh, tubing size. My two seven eight tubing is six point five pounds. My two three eight tubing is four point seven pounds per foot as well. And this is just an image of my packer that's set in a closed position. Next, I messed up. I messed up. I messed up. I messed up. Next, let's discuss the capacity of a, a mixed string. A mixed string means having two or more different size pipe in the well bore. The capacity of a mixed string can be calculated by finding the value of individual strings and adding up together. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, for the essence of this exercise, we'll be using the barrel profit factor, which we'll be, we're going to be building up in different scenarios. So for the barrel profit factor for a mixed string, we have to consider the diameter of the ID of the large string and the diameter of the ID of the small string. So that's what's going to give us our barrel profit factor. And for just our barrel to know how much volume, we're going to multiply them by their individual heights, so the height of the large string and the height of the small string. So let's get into this problem. Prior to setting a packer, fluid in the well bore is to be displaced with treated fluid. How many barrels is required to displace the entire column? given the conditions indicated in the diagram. So we have tubing of 278, 6.5 pound per foot, and tubing of 238, 4.7 pound per foot. It's a height of 5,500 and a total height of 9,500. So in order to calculate the volume, we will just plug in our numbers. And one thing to take into consideration here, like I mentioned, is you want the ID of your string. So ID large string of 2.875 is 2.441 and ID small string of 238 is 1.995. Also note, we know the height of the large string is 5500 because we know the measurement from here to here, 5500, but we're not given the height of the small string. So all we have to do is a simple subtraction, 9500 minus 5500 
that will give us this distance and we can just plug in our value and get our answer of 47.299 Bartok. Next, let's calculate the analog capacity. Analog capacity is the volume between the hole and casing ID and the drill pipe and tubing ID. It can be calculated using the following equations, or you can use your flow data book to get your analog factor for your pipe or your casing and your casing and tubing, your tubing and drill pipe. You can get your analog factor from those books as well. And compared to the total capacity, you have to subtract here. So you subtract your large ID of a large string and OD of a small string. And this, if you if you remember, or if you've seen the video on volume, my basic all flow mass by one volume, where we discussed finding the volume of a hollow tube, this will make a lot of sense. So you just subtract your large ID from your large OD using, we're going to use this equation. So let's get into the problem. What is the analog capacity of a well 7,000 feet deep, feet long, 278 inches, 6.5 pound tubing long, inside a 5.5, 17 pound per foot casing? So this is my tubing, this is my casing on the outside. On the inside, I have my tubing. And remember, these are both hollow structures. So they both have their individual IDs. But for this one, we're going to use OD. And for the five and a half, 14 pound per foot casing, we're going to use the ID. So OD, ID. So I plug in my OD. I plug in my ID of my large string. And I plug in my OD of my small string. I subtract them, multiply by 7,000, obtain my answer, 106.5, 259 pounds. That's my analog capacity. The last thing we'll discuss is how to determine the height of a fluid in a column. These equations will help to determine the fluid level after a certain volume of fluid has been added to the well bore. It can be calculated using your set of equations, these are your English units. You can use your height factors or your foot per barrel factors equation. You can use your foot per barrel factor equations. This also fat fit foot per barrel factor is also found in your flow data books as well. So I know I've mentioned you can get your foot per barrel factors from your data book. Your barrel per foot factors and even all these can be obtained from your data book. You can obtain your IDs from your flow data book in which would be um which will correspond to the various pipe weights. So it will be according to the pipe weight you have. So yet again, D will represent inner diameter which I'll plug into here. So my new fluid level will be original fluid level minus height of the fluid times the volume. So this will give me the amount I've added. So will give me my original level, which is given in the problem we'll discuss. And a simple subtraction will give me my answer. So a well 278 inches, 6.5 pound tubing with a fluid level of 10,000 feet. What will be the fluid level after I've added 40 barrels of fluid to the well bore. So, 278, 6.5 tubing, 40, pound, 40 barrels, which is this green image here, is added. And this is my height where my original fluid was added. So, what happened? My, I pumped down my yellow fluid down, right? And I pumped down these 40 barrels of fluid to my well bore. So I'm asking what is my new height if this was 10,000? So first of all, I want to determine what 40 barrels represents in terms of height, in terms of feet. So I just take my equation, which I put right here, multiply that by 40 barrels, I put in my ID of my tubing, and I get my answer in feet. Also, I take my new fluid level, you know how to determine that 
I take my original fluid level and I subtract that by the high factor I obtain. So my high factor times volume, which gave me the height. After doing subtraction, I'm able to obtain my answer of 3,088.957 feet. And that's how I, I obtain my height of the fluid. So I hope this video has helped. I hope it's cleared up some discrepancies or things you don't understand. I'll post all the information that I was going to post, the additional info, the glossary for words. And, your, and don't forget, in your field data book, you can find your IDs, you can find, you can find your ID, you can find your various fluid weights, your various pipe weights, I mean. In order to get the ID, in order to get the fluid weights, you can find all that in your field data book. So I hope you try this. No, I should end in there. No, she end in there. So thank you all for listening. I will post all the information, the additional info, the glossary for words. And don't forget, in the field data book, you can find the IDs according to the weight of your pipe or according to the weight of your string. Thank you for listening. And I hope you watch again or you watch any other of my videos and visit my site at petrobasics.com. Have a good day.